We have seen Donald Trump. No, not that Donald Trump. We mean Cracker Barrel, one of the most controversial restaurants in the fast food business, just as Trump is with everything. That chain has gone through crazy periods and it isn't stingy with the amount of trouble it gets in. But that wasn't the aim of its founder, or so the founder would like to claim. So where did things go wrong? This is the history of Cracker Barrel, the restaurant of litigations and controversies. You could say Cracker Barrel began with Dan Evans in 1969, but if you go deep into it, the path that led to the company began in the early 20th century, years before Dan was born. So let's start this rewind to the early 20th century. We are here. You see, in that period, Ford's Model T cars, Tin Lizzie's, became popular amongst Americans. Americans loved the vehicle, and when Ford stopped manufacturing the model in 1927, the company had already sold about 15 million cars. We know, this is about a restaurant. What does a car have to do with it? Everything. During the early 1900s, with the emergence of Ford and other vehicles, there was a problem. America lacked standard roads for interstate travel, so the country was a nation of drivers with no roads. Odd. And the solution wasn't coming anytime soon as the issue continued for another couple of years. That was before Americans elected President Eisenhower, who led to the creation of a robust interstate highway system. Eisenhower's system boosted interstate travel, and this period coincided with the rise of fast food malls. These malls pushed out small-scale restaurants that served home-style foods from the market. While this was a victory for the malls, it sucked for Americans. Traveling folks couldn't find good places to stretch, rest, and eat home-style meals. Dan Evans, an entrepreneur from Tennessee, spotted this problem. Evans understood travelers prefer home-style meals, and he knew Americans had a nostalgia for country life. So in 1969, he borrowed $40,000 and started a novel venture, a restaurant that would bring southern yore to American highways. In less than 15 years, Evans' gamble paid out. His idea was a hit. The restaurant became a publicly traded company. The company grew at a rate of 20% annually and attained a $1 billion market share. Amidst these positives, the company did some incredibly crazy and negative things. Dan Evans built his restaurant on Southern culture and cuisines, and it's no secret that Southern culture is more conservative than its other counterparts. So the company's culture was inherently conservative, but that conservative culture was a ticking time bomb to the company's nationwide perception. America was experiencing a homosexual policy revolution. Congress repealed a law that prohibited gays from entering America, and New York elected its first openly homosexual legislator in 1990. The next year, 1991, four U.S. states banned sexual orientation discrimination in the public and private sectors. In that same year, the business decided it wouldn't comply. Dan Evans, its CEO, wasn't a fan of homosexuals, and he went really weird with it. The business said it was going to fire employees whose sexual preference failed to demonstrate normal heterosexual values. Needless to say, the decision didn't appear to be well thought out, and so you guessed it, a controversy arose. The first medal on the company's coat of controversies. The chain's stance didn't come with heavy consequences, but the chain's trouble had just begun. And if you like to learn about the history of your favorite eateries, be sure to subscribe for more content like this. The company faced two discrimination lawsuits from 1999 to 2001, and these lawsuits came over 21 of their former employees. To worsen the issue, two years later in 2004, the U.S. Department of Justice found evidence that the company was stuck with Jim Crow laws. The Justice Department determined the business had violated Title II of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. This meant that the restaurant's management allowed its staff to practice racial segregation. It allowed members of staff to seat and serve white customers before black customers and offer inferior services to black customers. But again, the company managed to get away with it. The consequences of this indictment was minimal. A slap on the wrist. Well, for now. The Justice Department only forced the company to sign a five-year agreement. This agreement was for the company to introduce effective non-discrimination companies and procedures in the company. Unfortunately, racial discrimination remained prevalent in the company's affairs, until it started losing money, that is. Four months after the Justice Department indictment, the company settled a series of discrimination lawsuits with $8.7 million. These settlements and other anti-discrimination lawsuits reduced racial discrimination in the company. But, like a hydra, controversy grew another head, a money-gobbling head. After several years in the restaurant business, Cracker Barrel just couldn't evolve its policies. 
Sexual harassment was a sensitive issue in America in the 90s. Anita Hill's testimony against then-Supreme Court nominee Clarence Thomas attracted public attention to the topic. And Paula Jones's accusation against President Bill Clinton added fuel to the fire. So it was during this period of awareness against sexual harassment that was rife. Yet the male employees of the company decided that was the best time to be where poop comes out from. In 2006, two years after sorting its racial discrimination lawsuits, the restaurant paid $2 million to resolve a sexual harassment lawsuit brought by 51 of its former employees. The next year, 2007, the company settled another sexual harassment lawsuit from five of its former female employees with $270,000. After taking a break from settling the suits against it out of court, the company paid $255,000 to settle another lawsuit that claimed its male employees created a hostile work environment for female employees. So, within three years, the company paid over $2.5 million to settle sexual harassment lawsuits, and that was enough to take its managers back to the drawing board. Cracker Barrel made sure sexual harassment lawsuits became a distant past, but controversy was still in love with this southern-themed restaurant. When Dan Evans started his roadside restaurant, he envisioned an old country store that offered pan-fried chicken, grits, hush puppies, cobblers, and other southern cuisines to weary travelers. Help wasn't on his menu list. In fact, the company had a strict no-free-food policy, and it took its no-help policy too far. A couple visited the restaurant to celebrate the birthday of one of their two daughters. The wife, Kate Allen, used this opportunity to announce her divorce intentions to her husband, Kevin Allen. But Kevin wasn't having it, and things went wild. After the conversation, Kevin seized his wife's car keys and left the restaurant. Kate allegedly ran to the restaurant to ask for a place to hide from her angry husband. There, she found out that help wasn't on the menu. And then a great tragedy happened. Kevin returned and took the lives of his entire family. Police arrived and took Kevin's life too. And the restaurant made headlines for the wrong reason again. After a long relationship with controversies, the management wanted to avoid them at all costs. Good luck with that, Cracker Barrel. You see, the company sold products such as bedding, clothing, and books from the popular reality show Duck Dynasty. So in 2013, Phil Robertson, one of the stars of the show, made controversial, anti-homosexual comments. Phil's controversy should have had nothing to do with the restaurant, but the company reacted. It wanted to show the world that it had evolved. So its first move was to announce it was removing Duck and Dynasty products that would offend their guests. Unfortunately, their customers didn't like this, which the company found weird. The business thought of its customers and was shocked they opposed the move. So in less than 24 hours after removing the products, the company had to apologize to its customer base. It said, you told us we made a mistake and you weren't shy about it. The apology regardless, the company has mired itself into another controversy, an avoidable one, even when it was trying to avoid controversies, it entered into one. Cracker Barrel has a reputation for always making the news for the wrong reasons. But in its history, food poisoning hadn't become a reason for it to enter the news. The company rectified this by having a food poisoning problem, and it was on the legendary side. In 2017, a food poison outbreak, Salmonella, spread in southern Michigan. When the Kalamazoo County Health and Community Services Department traced it to Cracker Barrel and tried to identify the exact source of this salmonella, but it proved impossible. After a year of shutdown, sanitation, upgrade, and reopening, the salmonella problem refused to go away, so the company had to shut down the location permanently. Cracker Barrel has a history which is a combination of almost every litigation and controversy problem. It is one of the most controversial restaurants in the fast food industry. But things were not always like this. Before 1992, the company had no controversy or litigation history. It all started after its policy against homosexual people in 1992. Maybe things could have been different if Dan Evans hadn't been so prejudiced against homosexuals. But then the business also discriminated against its African-American employees. Then the company tried to set things right. It also entered into another round of controversy. As if those ones weren't enough, the company managed to not get into a food poisoning controversy. Will the poisoning controversy be the last in the company's history of controversies, or will Cracker Barrel be forever doomed to hop from one controversy to the other? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to support our channel.